All right, so you are here for getting started with Google Classroom for beginners. So Sean, if you could please go to the next slide. Thank you kindly. So we're gonna do some introductions. So, um, so we are the T3 team and we are joined by our partner in Title I. So we're just gonna go around and do some very quick introductions. So Noreen, if you could please introduce yourself. Sure, good morning everyone. I'm Noreen Burkhead and I work with the technology training team. All right, excellent. And next up we have Ashana. Good morning everyone. I'm so excited to be here with you today. I am Ashana Wangwing from the technology training team. Awesome, and we also have Nancy joining us. Good morning, everyone. I'm Nancy Benning. I work with the Title I office and am just excited to be here working with you all today. Awesome. And um, we, we thank you all for being here. My name is Sarah Thomas. I'm there on the bottom left hand corner. So this slide also has our uh, PGCPS remote teaching site. Once again, if you need it, as well as our T3 site is on the bottom right corner. So uh, any other T3 information can be found there at bit.ly forward slash T3 PGCPS. All right, so next slide, please. All right, so just a couple norms to get us started, just to make sure that we have a successful uh, session. So we will open a QA and a in, um, towards the end of the session. So you could drop any burning questions that you have regarding Google Classroom um, at that time, and we'll respond uh, through voice and also through chat and just so that you know we have almost 300 people right now so it might it may come as a cascade we may not be able to get to every single question but don't worry fear not because there will be a q a session specifically designed for your burning questions next week ashana will give you all the details about that towards the end of the presentation um but we will answer as many questions as we can in the time we have remaining at the end of the session also if you have questions related to google classroom those are welcome if you have questions related to anything else, if it's another tool that we're covering during our remote teaching workshops, then we would ask that you save it for that particular session. Or if it's for anything else, then you can always email t3 at pgcps.org and they'll get you the answer that you need. So once again, if you could please make sure to, uh, to mute your microphones, that would be fantastic. Um, and we're looking forward to going ahead and diving in right now. So before we jump into our agenda and talk about what we're going to discuss, then uh, just to let you know, we have tried to set this up in a way that hopefully will be helpful to you as we transition to remote teaching. So um, as you're planning out sessions for your students, then um, hopefully some of the information, the way that we present it might give you some ideas. Um, so, so yeah, we're, we're to have you all here with us today. All right, so what we're gonna be talking about, um, first, we're gonna talk about what is a Google Classroom. Then we'll talk about how to join a Google Classroom. Then after that, I am going to pass it over to my esteemed colleague, Noreen, who will tell you more about creating your own classroom, um, giving you a thorough walkthrough of the platform, as well as uh, how to set up assignments and share classwork. And then at the end, Ashana will give you tips on managing your students, as well as uh, some last minute tips and tricks, and uh, some next steps. So that's going to be what this session is going to look like. All right, so talking about what a Google Classroom is. Oh, and we just hit 300 people. Hello. All right, so talking about what a Google Classroom is, I'll tell you that it is, for me, a lifeline. <laughs> um, I love Google Classroom. It came out in about uh, in 2014, right before the 2014 school year started. And this has been such a time saver, a lifesaver. I could tell you, um, I was in the classroom for over 10 years, taught every grade from first to 12th. And by the time Google Classroom rolled out, I was teaching middle school. The bane of my existence was when students would say, oh, you know, I forgot, um, I, I lost my work, or you lost my work, or I never got it back, or, you know, turning in papers with no name on them, and that would drive me bonkers. So Google Classroom can help to solve these problems and many more. So if you look down in the bottom um, in the uh, yellow section, then Google Classroom is pretty much a platform that, that integrates all of the Google tools, uh, such as Docs, Drive, Gmail, Sheets, Forms, Drawings, all of those great things. And they, it helps you do several create and organize assignments quickly provide 
efficiently and communicating with your please. So uh, we're going to ask once again, please, if you can make sure that your microphones are muted. So if you look at the bottom panel and making sure that the very first icon is uh, red, and that way people will not be able to hear your microphone. All right. So at this time, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how to join a Google Classroom. Some of you may have already joined one before, um, but we're just going to take you through the steps to, to join them. So to join a Google Classroom, and we're not going to actually join one today because this is a webinar. Typically when we do Google Classroom sessions, um, a lot of times then we'll be in the same room as you and we can help kind of point out where things are on your screen. But think of this more as a demo slash walkthrough. And you can come back to this um, as you navigate creating your own Google Classroom if you haven't already done so. So you'll have this recording handy that you can watch and um, see it visually on the screen. So for today, we're just going to watch. But when you are doing, joining a Google Classroom, then you want to always, always, always use the Google Chrome web browser. And the reason is that Google designed um, G Suite, like all of the Google apps to play nicely in the sandbox with Google Chrome. You can use them on other browsers. You can use Safari, Firefox, Internet Explorer, Edge, whatever you use. However, you won't be able to get the most out of it. There are certain features that will only work on the Google Chrome web browser. So we strongly, um, we strongly suggest that you use that platform as you are um, using Google Classroom. So there's two main ways to get to Google Chrome, or I'm sorry, to Google Classroom. So the first way is when you're signed into your PGCPS email account or your Google Drive, or if you're on the Google homepage, the point is that you're signed into your PGCPS one. And you will click the app launcher in the upper right-hand corner. So it looks like nine dots. Uh, so you'll click that, and then you'll click on the Google Classroom icon, and then the plus button and uh, you'll have two options, one to create a class and another to join a class. So to join a class, you would select join class. Um, your other option is that you could go to classroom.google.com and log in with your PGCPS credentials if it asks you for them, and then click on the plus button at the top right-hand side and select join class. Now, one thing I wanna bring to your attention because this tends to come up a lot um, if you are creating a classroom for your students or you are trying to join a classroom that was created by someone with the PGCPS account, you must be logged in with your PGCPS credentials, not your personal Gmail. If you log in with your personal Gmail, you are going to get an error. So if you get an error nine times out of 10, the reason is that you may be signed into multiple different uh, email accounts. You might be signed into your PGCPS as well as your personal Gmail and it's going to that personal one and that's why you're getting the error so we would ask that you sign out of your personal one or you um make sure that you're on your pgcps account or you could even use the incognito window if you know how to do that um and just make sure that you're logged in with your pgcps credentials so right now what i'm going to do is pass the mic over to my great colleague noreen and she's going to walk you through um google classroom uh starting with creating it so um one of the things we'd like for you to consider um before creating your class is um how do you want to organize your classroom if you're a secondary teacher, uh, perhaps you want to organize by mod or period. Um, if you're elementary, uh, maybe you want to organize by um, the courses you um, are responsible for. Um, if you're departmentalized, you might organize by um, having a reading class and then all of the fifth graders that you um, teach reading to would be in that one classroom. There really is no right or wrong answer. It's on how you can best manage your classwork and your students within the class. So just take that into consideration um, in creating your classroom. Um, Ashana is going to go to her email for me, and we're going to step through um, some features that you'll see in Google Classroom. And so we go to the um, apps launcher. And then Sean is going to find the um, classroom icon for me. When it comes up, 
you'll see all of the classes that Ashana has been involved with, either as a co-teacher, as um, a student, you know, for PD, or on classes that she has created. In the upper right corner, you'll notice a plus sign. Click on the plus, and you'll see create class. You want to select create class and give your class a name. Um, again, think about how you're organized. How do you want your um, class to be identified for students so they'll know the correct um, class to go to? <laughs> Excuse me, you can add section numbers here, um, the subject that it is in, in the room, but definitely you want to give it a class name. If you cannot see the um, when you, if you do not see the create when you um, log in um, or click on that plus sign, you need to do a help desk ticket so you can be added to the teacher domain and they'll give you the ability to um, create. So Shana's going to go ahead and select create for me. And once it comes in, I'll be in my new class. Over in the top left corner, I see my class name. And then beside it, I notice there are three um, lines. If I click on those lines, it shows me, again, all of the classes that I'm involved with. It also shows me a calendar. Google Classroom actually creates a calendar um, for you and for your students. So as you add due dates, it will add those due dates to the calendar, and we'll show you how to do that in a minute. If I scroll down and go all the way down to find settings, this is where I can um, change how I receive notifications for um, students if they turned in their work. Um, I can... Um, see um, posts from other teachers here also. If I do not want a particular option, all I have to do is turn it off. And that, that's simply by clicking on the button there. I can also change my profile um, picture here as well. So we're going to go back into the class. And this is our stream page. It's really our landing page for our class. This is what you'll, your students will see as soon as they log into Google Classroom. Over on the left, you'll notice that there's a class code. If I click on that um, box there, it will open up the class code a little larger. <laughs> so if I was in this um, classroom with my students, I could open it up so they can see it. I could even make it full screen. Um, again, so it, it's viewed a little um, better. Um, we are not recommending at this time that you send your class code to students. Um, normally, you would do, use the class code when they're sitting in front of you, and you can ensure that you have the right students there. Um, sometimes students have been known to take that class code and share it with their friends. Um, and so you might end up with additional students in your class. Uh, we will show you, though, how you can get your students into the classroom just a little later. So we're going to click off this. And let's talk about the type of things you may want to see on this stream page. Definitely, you can um, want to share announcements that are going on. Um, things that you want your students to see as soon as they log into the class um, page. So to share something with your class, you just click that link. And let's do a welcome. So Shauna's going to put in um, a welcome so our students see that as soon as they come into the classroom. Um, I can from here add a um, Google um, Drive document. I could add a link to a website. So if I had a class website, I could add the link here 
Um, I could add a file. I could add a movie. Really, whatever I wanted to have um, when students first log in. At the top, you'll notice also that I can use this in more than one class. So if I wanted the same message to appear in another classroom, I just select the additional class where I want it to show up, and it could be shown there. If I had a, a particular announcement I wanted for maybe just a group of students, if I had students in the class, I could come in here and select the students that I wanted that particular announcement to go to. This is also a great place to have discussion questions. So you could use this as a discussion board. And after um, letting your students know the appropriate um, behavior to have here when uh, responding to the dis discussion, use this as you could use this as a discussion question um, area. Um, over under post, I have the option to post this announcement immediately. I could schedule it for a later date. Or if there was additional work I wanted done, I could save it as a draft and then come back to work on it later. So we're going to post it. And now once it's posted, it's there on our stream page. So at the top, you'll notice also we have something called classwork. And this is where the, um, the bulk of your activity will be for your students. If I click on the create, I see there's several features here. We're going to discuss three of them today. The first one is assignment. We'll take a look at questions, and then also material. So let's go back to assignment. And in here, I can put in um, the assignments that I want my students to do. We'll just call this one warm up. And here I would give additional um, instructions for the students to follow. Um, I hope you're noticing that as we go through these different features, a lot of them repeat. So they're the same for um, several features as um, as we progress through this. Here also I can add um, information just like I could on the announcement or stream page. So for this we're going to go to Google Drive and we're going to find that warm up I want students to do. And once that's in, I have the option now of my students can view the file, which would be mainly if I had like a template that I wanted to use again, but students could view it and then make a copy of it with their name on it. So they would have that and I would retain my template. Students can edit the file. That's a collaborative document. Perhaps we're working on a Google slide and um, each student has a slide and so all of us could be in that same document if I give them edit right. And then the last one is make a copy for each student. So that will actually make the copy for my student and put their name at the top so they don't even have to add their name to it. So we'll select that one. And now over on the right hand side, I see that again I have the option to have it just for this class, or I can have it for multiple classes. So I can select the classes there. Um, it could be just for the students in this classroom, or if I needed to differentiate my students in this particular class, I could go in and select the students um, that would be um, that would need to receive this assignment. The default is a hundred points. So we can leave it at 100 points. And then underneath that, we'll see that we also have due date. So I could put a due date on this. And maybe this is for a first period class. And so I want it to be completed by the, um, by the time first period is over. 
So I put nine o'clock there. So anything that is turned in after that date and time will be marked as late. And so I'll have that. And remember, this assignment will also go into their calendar. Um, topics are another way for you to organize your classwork um, within the classroom. So we're just going to call this topic warm up. And now I have to make the decision. Do I want to assign it right now? Am I done with it? But at the top I have a blue button. And again, I can assign it now. I can schedule it for a later time. Or I can save it as a draft and be able to come back to it to do additional work if I needed to um, add additional information for my students. We're going to schedule it. And so now that I've scheduled it, it will appear for that appointed time that um, we selected. And we can see it there for um, our warm ups there. And now we have the, under topics, we have a warm up topic. The next one um, we want to take a look at is questions. And question is, um, allows me to ask a single question. So I'll, let's see, um, what were the causes of the Civil War? And you get the option of making it a short answer or multiple choice. And again, I can um, add additional instructions here. Um, we're going to actually view a video about the Civil War to determine the causes. And so when I click on Add, I see I have YouTube, and it goes right to YouTube. I can do my search to find an appropriate um, video for the students to view. And once I find the video I like, I can add that into that particular assignment. Again, over on the right, I can um, have it for that this class, or I can add it to additional classes. Same thing with my students. It could be for all the students, or it might be for a group of students I may want to do this particular work. The default, again, is 100. We recommend if you wanted to change that to a lower number that you keep it in base 10. Um, I can, and I can assign a due date here for when that project should be, or that question should be answered. And um, I think we need a topic for this, so we're going to call this one social studies, or civil war, I'm sorry, social studies, fine. And you see I have an additional option here. Students can reply to each other, or they can edit their answer after they have um, completed. So depending on how you're using this um, question, you may or may not want students to be able to apply to each other or to edit their answer. If this was like a, maybe an exit ticket, you probably can would not want to check those two, so we're going to uncheck it. Again, under ask, I have the um, option to ask it now. I can um, also schedule it for a later date, or I can save it as a draft. If you save things as a draft, it will put it at the top of the classwork. Your students won't see it, but you'll be able to see it to, and be able to go in to um, continue work on it. And so now you see we have two topics, Civil War and uh, Warm-Up. And if I decided I wanted my Warm-Up to be at the top, all I have to do is grab Warm-Up and move it up. And so now Warm-Up is at the top, and my um, Civil War assignment is at the bottom. So you can switch them around. Under Create, the next um, item we want to look at is material. And think of material as being um, where you would put your classroom resources. 
So you might have things here like on your syllabus, links to textbooks, um, a link to a website. So we're going to actually make this our syllabus. And under um, description, we'll say social studies syllabus. And now to add that, we're going to go um, back to Drive and find our syllabus here. And add it in here for our students. Now notice I didn't get the option here to um, make a copy for every student or to provide it to a student because really this is a resource. This is our resource um, section. So over under topic, let's create a, a a topic called resources so students will know this is where they're going to come for any of their classroom resources. And I can again share this with another class or just share it with a select group of students. We're just going to post it. But we have the option there also to schedule for a later date or save as draft. Because we just created it, resources shows up at the top. We'll want to um, perhaps uh, maybe put our warm-ups back up there so we can just grab it and we can organize um, how we want this classwork page to look. You'll also see here I have a Google Calendar and a Class Drive folder. When you create your class, you don't have to worry about creating folders for your students or for the class. Classroom automatic, automatically does that for you. So you'll see within your um, drive, you'll have a, a classroom folder with the name of the class on it. And then inside that folder will be the individual students and the work. So we're going to take a look now at people. And under people, this is where we can add our co-teachers and add our students. To add a co-teacher under the teacher heading, I click on the little person um, symbol with a plus sign. And as I start to type the person's name, because this is connected to Active Directory, it goes in and we can see that there's Sarah. And so we're going to select um, Sarah's name. Um, if you type just a few letters of a person's name, you don't even have to type the full name. So, um, Ashana just put NOR and there I am. And then she's going to invite Sarah and I to be co-teachers in her class. Now, when it comes in, you're going to see our names are kind of grayed out because we have to accept the invitation from her to make us um, part of the co-teachers. Co-teachers can do the same thing that teachers can do, except they cannot delete a class. Only the person that creates the class can delete the class. If I decided I... Um, didn't want um, a person, I can um, from here email or remove the person. And when we add our students, um, again, we're going to make sure we put them under the student heading. We've had some people add them under the teacher heading. So we want to make sure we put them under the student heading. And we could type in the student's name and select the student because, again, it's going to Active Directory. Um, the district has been working on a way to um, have students grouped under their teachers that they're going to make available um, to all the teachers um, either sometime this week or the beginning of next week. So all you'll have to do is copy and then paste the student's names into um, under the student listing, and then you will be able to invite them to join the class. So you would paste the names here where um, Ashana's um, typing, 
and then um, the students would be invited to the class. And she, we would select invite, and then they would have to um, accept the invitation. Um, we're going to show you from the um, presentation kind of what that's going to look like because we don't have any students here. And so um, once students are invited to the class, they're also, you'll see, have an option for you to invite your parent or guardian. So you email all of your guardians in the classroom and then they, to send them, extend the invitation to join the class and they can accept. And then their email address will be there on that line next to their student's name. Um, it's very important that you do not give the code to your parents. Um, the only ones that should get the code are your students, but by having by having this email invite, um, parents can see how their student is doing in the classroom. And, and again, that's very important because of privacy. Um, you wouldn't want uh, someone else being able, being able to see your student work. This ensures that they can see only your um, your students' work as a parent. The last thing is grades. Um, within grades, um, you can use Google Forms to um, auto generate um, the corrections or grade the um, form, and it will add that um, grade into the grade book here in Classroom. You can also add grades, like with our assignment for warm-up, um, the teacher would have to look at that assignment and determine if the student earned the full 100 points or not, and then add that into the grade book. Students must turn in their um, assignment um, to um, be able to uh, have it graded. But once they turn it in and you grade, they will be able to um, view their um, grades there. Um, unfortunately, the grade book in classroom does not sync up with the grade book in school max. So, you would have to transfer the grades from classroom into your um, Schoolmax account because Schoolmax is our is our official grade book. So that's our walkthrough of um, Google Classroom. I'm gonna turn it back over to Ashana. Good morning again, everyone. Thank you, Noreen, for a wonderful walkthrough of Google Classroom. Um, we will move into instructional considerations now. And you see we have classroom management here with classroom in quotations. We know that many of you have amazing classroom management within your physical classroom, and we want to support you in looking at what that would look like within a virtual classroom. Keeping students engaged. How will you keep your students engaged within Google Classroom? We have some tips for that as well. First, how will you manage students? So when educators start the beginning of the school year, most of you uh, may have rules created already, or some of you even allow your students to participate in the creation of the classroom rules. This is something that you want to do. You want to have expectations and norms, just as we set expectations and norms at the beginning of this training, you want to ensure that within your Google Classroom, you have expectation, norms, rules, however you want to title it. And when you set those expectations and rules, allow the students to add it, um, suggest what they believe um, should be a part of the expectations within Google Classroom. And once you post those in the classroom, remember that you can repost them just as we revisit classroom rules throughout the school year when we see our students are getting a little antsy we may step in and say oh let's re let's revisit our rules you would want to revisit your rules within the classroom 
have them posted in materials possibly. Um, well, one of the reasons why you want to have those expectations set is that Google Classroom allows for you to have conversations or discussions. Remember, Noreen said you can post discussions in the stream. You want to, um, you can allow either allow the students to reply to each other or not. Some people aren't very comfortable with allowing the students to reply to each other. And although I know you may not be uncomfortable at first, um, we really want you to explore the idea of giving those students that responsibility to show up in the classroom responsibly. Um, what, is there a possibility that students may post stuff inappropriately? That's quite possible, right? That then becomes a teaching opportunity. You get to be a teacher that teaches digital citizenship because when the students leave our classroom, they are going to be online on um, Instagram or YouTube or whatever it is. And we want to show them what digital citizenship looks like. And this really allows you to say, oh, hey, that comment did not, that comment wasn't very respectful. Um, how would you feel if someone responded to your um, comment like that? And just start that discussion. So um, you do have the option to turn those um, commenting features on or off. And like I said, you really want to um, show the students that you trust that they're that age where they can make responsible decisions. And um, like I said, if you don't feel comfortable with that at first, it could be an ease into that. Um, you can also um, ask questions and the students answer. And um, if you're gonna, uh, an idea would be if you're gonna have a classroom discussion, set it for a specific time and say, on the stream from one to two, we're gonna have a classroom discussion about the video that I asked you to watch. And then you can turn on this, the option for students to reply to each other at that time, and you're at the computer, so you're able to easier um, monitor it easily. So um, there are various ways that you can allow for communication um, amongst the class. We don't want to we don't want to lose those rich discussions that you had in the classroom. Um, we want you to continue to foster those discussions. Considerations. When will you be available for student assistance answering questions? When I was in college, my professors had office hours and I knew if I had a really important question one on, that I wanted to ask one on one, I could go to my professor's office at the, that time. Um, when we know you have a virtual classroom. You might want to set virtual class um, office hours where the students know you will be at your device and be able to give immediate responses to questions. Maybe that's every day from one to two, you will be at your computer um, just specifically for that and answering students' questions immediately. Will you encourage students to answer each other's questions and how will you monitor that? We discussed that already. Um, will you have times where you're gonna have class discussions or will you allow the, um, the responses to be open at all times? And we will discuss later the option to turn notifications on. So if you do have the reply, reply option open to your students. You could get no notifications to your phone when they're when they're replying. Keeping students engaged. Many of you have very awesome lessons. Your students are always engaged in the, in the, in the classroom. You're facilitating learning, walking around the classroom as they're engaged. We want to keep them engaged in classroom as well. You want to ensure that you're varying assignment types. You don't, um, you can use Google Slides, Google um, Forms, you can import videos. There are many tools outside of Google Classroom that will allow you to integrate the tool into Classroom, um, such as um, Kahoot or something like that. So there are different options. You can actually send things to the Classroom and make the, the Classroom engaging, all right? Differentiating your learning using a sign to feature. Um, Noreen talked about this when we went to assignments. You could assign it to specific students. We didn't have any students in our classroom. We have zero students, so you didn't see the student list. But once you add your students, you'll see under um, the all students pull down, you'll see all your students' names. And many of you, many of you scaffold your activities for your students based on their level. This is your opportunity to say, okay, I've accommodated this, this activity to meet the needs of specific students, and I can assign this, 
this version of the activity to the this group of students. And then maybe you have the students that always, you know, zoom through their assignments and you maybe you extend the lesson and have additional things for them to do. You could assign it to that group of students. Adding videos and images where possible. We added a video in, um, in our in our question and answer option in classroom and the students can respond to the, the video if you're prompted um, them to think about certain questions while they're watching the video. Allow students to collaborate and create. Make sure you're giving them the opportunity to collaborate within classroom. One of the things that I did when I was in the classroom is every year at the end of the year, I had a final project and the students had to um, plan a trip had a budget and they created a presentation in Google Slides. And this goes on to the next topic. Um, they knew the expectations of that project at the beginning before they even received it. And as they were moving along with the project, because it was in slides, I could actually, I would let them know, I, I, I would check in on specific dates to see their progress. And then I would be able to comment and let them know um, if any adjustments were needed, give suggestions and, um, that was a way for me to check in with them before the due date and provide feedback so they knew if they were on the right track or if they needed to make any changes. Um, that's the beauty of this, these tools is that you can actually check in on your students and comment and the comments are there and they can reply and it's a wonderful way to um, monitor your students' progress. Reminders, you choose to create um, classwork and when you choose to create a classwork assignment um, the students will then be able to turn it in okay quiz assignments quiz assignments creates a google form that google form will grade automatically and we didn't go over that today because we have forms trainings if you would like to explore how to create a quiz look out for forms on um, google forms trainings in the future um, this but the google form will uh, Quizzes will actually allow you to import those grades into classroom, into your classroom gradebook. And it takes no paper, you don't have to grade with a red, a red pen or a colored pen or anything, it grades it for you. Be as specific and precise as possible with your directions. Remember, you are not in the room with the students, so you wanna ensure that your directions are very clear, step by step. And if you're not sure, have someone else read your directions and say, would you know what to do if you saw this? And um, that's a one way to check to see if your directions are clear. Students must click turn in in order for an assignment to be accepted. They can't just finish the assignment and just say, oh, I'm done. You won't, you won't see that it's turned in. So they actually have to click on turn in. There is an app for Google Classroom and you can download it within the app store on iOS devices or the Google Play Store. This is good, if, especially if you're allowing the students to comment, because then you can get notifications when students are replying to something. And if by, by chance the students say something inappropriate, you probably will end up getting a lot of notifications because students will start responding. So um, that's a good way to stay abreast of what's going on in your, your classroom. All right, we're getting ready to go into the question and answer session shortly. Before we get there, Know that you can access the safe, self-paced Google Classroom session for bit.ly forward slash PGCPS remote teaching. One thing that we want you to do as you are um, leaving this session is to create your own Google Classroom if you don't already have one. Some of you are you know, eager beavers and you've already created your classrooms for your students. You do not have to create new ones. Um, but if you don't have one, create one. Um, we want you to play with the tools, create an assignment, add something from Drive, add a video, um, just test Google Classroom out, add your syllabus, create topics, just do everything that you saw in the training today, practice it. And once you've practiced it, if you are lost on anything, guess what? We have Q&A sessions next Tuesday, April 7th and Wednesday, April 8th from nine to 10, and our team will be available for you to drop in and ask questions and have them answered. You can stay the entire time and see what other questions may be asked, or you can just ask your question and leave. Um, the, the great part is we'll be here, and those are our 
office hours, essentially, for you to ask us questions. We want to thank you again for your time and attention. Um, and we definitely hope to see you at another at another session.